Joining us right now is Mayor Pandit, J.P. Morgan, uh, Asset Management Global uh, Market Strategist. Good morning to you. You've been listening to this conversation. Do you want to weigh in on this piece of it? Absolutely. I mean, I think that it is a question of control versus what the Fed is finding convenient. Because if you look at the short end of the curve, right. in terms of two-year yields, they really haven't moved a lot recently. So in that sense, they're, they're pretty well under control in terms of garnering short-term rates in, in the area they want. The issue is a long end, and with them stepping back as a major buyer, um, there's really only one way that they can influence the curve. And I think that the big issue at the long end of the curve is the big existential issues in terms of supply, federal finances in the long run, and how we actually finance the deficits that we need to at higher and higher rates, and who's right. going to be the buyer given some of the uncertainty around that. So I think right now it's very convenient for the Fed in terms of further rate moves that you have the long end move higher and doing some of the work for them, tighter financial conditions. The question is if they do want right. to ease back on some of that What's your prognostication at this point about what they do next and when, if they're, if they're going to do something? Let's not take a, another rate hike off the table. I know that people came out of last week thinking that Powell was very dovish, but I actually heard a very balanced view of we're in restrictive territory, but further rate hikes might be necessary, but there's further tightening in this tightening calendar in year? Potentially in December. Okay. I think that if you think they, in November off the table at this point. At this point, I don't think there was strong enough signaling to, to say we were going right. to do one more rate hike soon. But it was only a month ago that most of the FOMC right. participants saw another hike. So all of them changed their mind in, in the last couple of weeks. Could a really strong GDP number change that? I mean, Potentially. I mean, we had a string of strong data. I, I think the real GDP numbers that we're likely to get later this week um, have been well forecasted for months now that this is going to be a really strong print. When you add on to that higher CPI, higher jobs, higher retail sales. Yeah, but four and a half percent for the consensus versus you know, 5.4 percent or whatever it was for the Atlanta Fed. That's a big difference. If there's a number north of five percent, I would think that that would potentially change the scenario. I don't know if it'll change it for November just because it seems like they want to not catch the markets off surprise, especially when markets have actually taken down their probabilities of a hike in November. But I think that they could start signaling for December more strongly. But look, the economy usually goes at 2 percent. So whether it's 4 percent right. or 5 percent, yes, that's a big difference. But we're, we're basically looking at double right. normal growth. When did you think about uh, Powell's comments last week where he effectively, I thought, was saying, look, you know, I'm not that worried about most homeowners. I'm not really worried. I mean, he didn't say I'm not worried about a 2008 crisis, but he was saying basically in terms of mortgages and the like, because people are locked in, that, he, that he, you know, there hasn't been any real movement. The problem is that you're affecting new, new buyers and you're, you're affecting durable goods orders and, and things like, you know, automobiles. We heard Elon Musk and the like. So how do you think he's thinking about those sort of two sides of the coin? Well, it's interesting. On the one hand, he said, I think some of these long and variable lags are not going to be as long and variable because the central bank can well forecast things and markets can price it in. On the other hand, you look at things like mortgage rates, you look at things like companies issuing debt and how far they've turned things out. These lags could actually be much longer this cycle right. because of how long people have locked things in. But he also nodded to the fact that are we headed to, towards an era of supply shocks? And I think that's a big one because ultimately when we think about housing and the lack of housing supply right. and many of the other supply issues, geopolitically related, commodities related, the question is, are we still in this pandemic aftermath where we're kind of getting through some of that? Or are we going to see more concerted supply shocks in different areas over the next right. several years? Is that going to change how they think about that Which neutral rate? Which camp are you in? I think that we might see on the margin a little bit more on the supply right. shock. I mean, the housing, the housing issue is a big one, right. I think, when it comes to inventory. we got to run, but finally, are you surprised, and we haven't really even talked, I mean, we talked a little bit about Israel and Hamas this morning, but how, is there any risk baked into the situation of just what's happening in the Middle East and how far that could go? I think that broader conflagration clearly will be an issue if we have more regions being brought in and that affects right. oil prices right now because things are contained we want to monitor it but it doesn't seem like an immediate risk but these things can can get out of hand quickly so we want to continue right. to monitor that tail risk okay